and now i would request amrish ji to kindly uh, initiate the discussion friends i welcome to all of you in this webinar this is uh, our first webinar we are planning to hold a series of webinar on critical issues of education in this changing scenario this is uh, about to write to education in changing scenario of the covid uh, covid 19 pandemic so uh, i am happy that uh, professor uh, shyam menon accepted our request to address this first webinar uh, professor shyam menon is a renowned academician in this country educationist he is former uh, vice chancellor of ambedkar university he is former dean in uh, faculty of education in delhi university at present he is professor in delhi university in department of education so i don't want to take much time uh, because you will certainly you will enjoy the thoughtful deliberations of professor manan and after that uh, after his speech he will speak about 15 to 20 minutes on the perspective on the concept on the what is happening um, uh, around education and right to education and uh, what will be the impact and after his speech we will uh, invite we have a little time so there will there will be i think 10 minutes left after his speech so some uh, people can make their observations some questions so i will request srijita to moderate second session uh, observation and question answer session and pass on the uh, your reaction to the professor menon and he will um, Uh, we will request him to comment on that so th th this will be uh, around 40 minutes so uh, we are i i i i i am very much thankful to professor manan that uh, he will he is going to speak in our first webinar and by these words uh, and uh, i i i uh, request all of you to be safe and healthy in this period we are facing many uh, issues uh, health crisis and uh, you know the during the, this due to the lockdown the millions of people they have no access to food and shelter children are suffering so in this period this webinar can give a light and spirit to us so by these words i would like to request professor shyam menon to address this webinar Uh, good morning. Thank you, Ambarish ji. Uh, I hope uh, okay. you can hear my voice. Yeah, this is. I, I hope I am audible. Okay. Uh, uh, let me first of all congratulate uh, and uh, express my deep sense of appreciation for uh, um, Ambarish ji and his team in the RTE forum for um, in, uh, ensuring that our, uh, our uh, in spite of the physical lockdown that we are all. Uh, subjected to at the moment there is no intellectual and emotional lockdown uh, we are um, we have been given a platform in which to express ourselves and uh, as citizens uh, we don't stop being citizens just because there is a physical lockdown you, and uh, yeah. the and that's uh, and i think i, I really congratulate uh, rte forum for Uh, creating such a platform, and I hope that uh, this is, as he said, the first in a series of uh, similar interactions, similar dialogic process. And I also hope that uh, that I also hope that um, um, uh, the the in, uh, the interactions would be more in terms of reflections and and, uh, and the bringing in their own uh, the individual experiences of uh, all participants, and not by way of just question answers. And I, 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 if it, it, it will be great if the technology allows us to document some of these interactions into uh, di uh, dialogues, so we can someday bring out a publication called Dialogues Under Lockdown or something like that. Um, so uh, I, um, I let me first of all again congratulate uh, RT Forum for this initiative. 
um forgive me for my appearance i'm on a lockdown appearance as you can see um uh, uh, so that is in a way a background to whatever i'm going to speak about here i am most grateful to ambirish ji for persuading me to participate in this uh, webinar this required me to come out of my comfort zone as a practitioner of institutional development and renewal in higher education and it forced me to collect my am amorphous and half hearted half half formed thoughts about uh, school education and the prospects it may have in the post covid um india i propose to share with you some of my thoughts on the changed realities that public schools may find themselves in uh, in the immediate aftermath of the pandemic crisis and the consequent lockdown my thoughts are based on the authentic experiences shared so readily with me with my, with such kindness and sensitivity by uh, three of my close friends mr firoz ahmed dr manoj chahil and uh, mr gaurav sharma who are very distinguished and much respected teachers in the public school systems in delhi i have also been benefited from the discussions i have had with uh, dr geeta menon and dr gunjan sharma i put forward a caveat right in right at dots outset uh covid 19 pandemic drama has just about begun in india from all accounts even its first act has not reached its climax there are many scenarios uh, that epidemiologists economists and social scientists are describing some of which uh, are quite pessimistic while some others demonstrate cautious optimism however uh, these are early days and one never knows how things will pan out uh, we may not be able to predict as yet how many cases of covid 19 india will eventually have and what our mortality figures are likely to be whatever may be the epidemiological impact we are assured of one thing by all the experts we are moving towards a major economic crisis that some people liken to the great depression of the 1929 to 1933 from what we have witnessed so far in this pandemic drama it is very clear that the disease as well as the preventive measures against it like the present lockdown have both been impacting the poor segments of our population much more severely than others these have disrupted both lives and livelihoods of the poor and the marginalized the living conditions of the poor that were unstable even prior to this crisis have now been rendered further precarious the there's some noise uh, the plight of the migrant workers are etched deeply on our consciousness in the form of televised images of their long walks towards their homes and the brutally brutality and insensitivity that were meted out to them all along their long journey what however does not come across to us equally dramatically is how the lockdown has shaken the fragile foundations of the lives of such people around us as barbers cobblers tailors small house shopkeepers household workers taxi drivers car washers dhobis dhaba walas electricians plumbers and the, and people belong into hundreds of other categories who live hand to mouth on the very fringes of our economy even when the pandemic eventually eases to grip on us even when the pandemic eventually eases its grip on us the economy particularly the informal sectors are not likely to return to its original state the system has been stretched beyond its elastic limits and there is perhaps no getting back to where we were in delhi particularly the timing of the pandemic could not have been more inopportune we had witnessed a major communal violence just a few weeks before the lockdown there was hardly any time for processing this collective trauma leave alone starting the process of healing people were still in the relief camp at eedga in mustafabad and they had to be evacuated in time for the enforcement of the lockdown what has 
happen to these families who have lost their dear ones, their homes and their livelihoods? We don't know very much about them. Even those of us who have time and again been tested positive for this disease, this other disease called naive optimism, had predicted that the communal forces would find a way of deriving mileage even out of a crisis that affects, uh, that affects equally all members of the human species. Sure enough, it happened this time as well. And many mainstream TV channels and social media were full of shrill exclamations about Corona Jihad. I say all these things as a background against which we must look at the state of public school system in Delhi and what may be in, the, in store for them. I'm deliberately not going to talk about the private schools except this brief remark on, on the likely plight of the EWS students there. With the private schools competing with each other in going gaga over technology solutions like online education, video conferencing and so on, one wonders how the EWS children may be faring. Inadequate access right to technology. Education. Bombay. Uh, can I continue? Mm. Please may I continue? Mm. Inadequate access to technology becomes an additional dimension to their overall experience of deprivation and marginalization. Let me leave this topic at uh, here. Uh, this could well be a topic for another, a, 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 a subject for another webinar. Let us now look more closely at the MCD and the schools run by um, uh, MCD schools and the schools run by the Department of Education, Government of Delhi. The children in these schools are from the families of the very categories of people on the margins that I mentioned earlier. The specific socio-economic um, profiles of students may vary across schools from location to location, but by and large, they are from families that are dependent on livelihoods in the informal sectors. As a teacher in a government school told me, the relatively better off in his class are a couple of students who, whose parents are class four employees in the government. Almost all others come from families whose livelihoods are much more precarious and unstable. A segment of students are children of migrant workers. Several of the children, particularly girls, put in considerable amount of for coming to school. Uh, several, um, uh, they, they put in several, uh, 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 considerable amount of domestic work before coming to school and some of them after school hours go to the Kotis to assist their mothers as domestic workers in middle class families. Almost all children are critically dependent on midday meals provided at school. Disruption in the lives of these families on the margins has been to such an extent that it is quite, a, quite likely to manifest starkly in the life at school during the lockdown and beyond. The government has given a somewhat vague direction to teachers to stay engaged, stay connected with students through social media. Some uh, teachers are sporadically attempting to form um, WhatsApp groups and some others trying to reach out through phone calls. However, only about one third of students have registered in these WhatsApp groups and even among them, only very few have responded to communications from teachers. The technological solutions to reach out to students are clearly quite ineffective by all accounts. Teachers suspect that some of the, their students may, may, uh, may have got dislocated and may not even be able to access communication of any kind. The kind of trauma that the children may be going through may be such that would make it quite unrealistic for us to expect any kind of focus or concentration on their studies. Those teachers who have been in touch with some of their students say how reticent the children have been generally in talking about their difficult situations. A large number of children in public schools in the communal violence affected areas of Delhi are from families that have got dislocated and completely disrupted. It is doubtful whether many of such children will be able to re-access their disrupted education even after the schools reopen. The lives of children in the margins are completely disrupted at present. 
This makes the continued participation of their children in school that much more uncertain and problematic. When the schools reopen, we are likely to witness the following. It is quite likely that we, there may be some reduction in numbers for new admissions in 2020-21 into classes uh, one as well as to class six. It is quite likely that there may be unusually low attendance across classes. It is also quite possible that we may witness high rates of dropout, particularly beyond class five or class eight. By all accounts, the dropout rates may be higher among girl children. Children, particularly girls, may be called upon increasingly to attend to, uh, attend to uh, domestic chores and assist their mothers in their livelihoods outside home. And boys in their teens may be sent into the wage labor market. It is quite likely that there will be a certain extent of regression in the familial support for children's education, particularly beyond class five or class eight. On the other hand, there is a possibility of a reverse exodus from the private to government schools as well. Those families who have been sending their children, particularly boys, to affordable, quote unquote, affordable private schools are likely to put them back in government schools since they will no longer be able to afford the private costs uh, towards their children's education. As one can well imagine, social distancing will be uh, difficult to observe in schools, however much one tries. Children, by their very nature, uh, huddle and cuddle among themselves. Children need sports and games, and touch is an important aspect of most of these activities. All this would be a lot difficult to negotiate with, uh, with, negotiate with once the schools reopen. One hears about shift systems and other means of decongesting of schools that is being considered that are being considered. But it remains to be seen as to how effective these measures are likely to be. Social distancing between teachers and students has um, uh, always been there in public schools, particularly where there is a major class difference between teachers and students. This has, in some sense, been a problem even prior to the crisis in pro uh, crisis. Uh, in providing an emotional, congenial environment of nurturance and support at school. With the present pandemic and the stigma now much more amplified, associated with the life conditions these children come from, this is likely to be a major challenge to address in our government school system. It must be mentioned here, however uncomfortable we may feel about it, that the prejudices, uh, I, may, I would like to call it as the social pandemic, that seek to associate a particular religion to the spread of COVID-19 is one in which many among the people like us have also been tested positive. There is no reason to believe that teachers and other functionaries in government school system will have any special immunity to this social pandemic. This more than anything else is going to corrode the very core of the value systems that government schools are built on. One shudders to think as to how this is going to pan out in the everyday life in our government schools for years to come. These are not prophecies. These are only some of the likely scenarios. There is a necessity, there is a necessity to highlight these in whichever forums we have access to. At least cognizing these possibilities will enable us to find ways of preventing these from actualizing to its full pathology. It is important for us to find ways and means to prevent these from actually happening and weakening the already fragile system of public school education. The Delhi government has an important role to play in anticipating some of these possible scenarios and preparing themselves to address these adequately. A renewed campaign in community awareness for the need to continue to send children to school and to ensure that they are not withdrawn from school is necessary. Equally necessary would be an intense sensitization among teachers on matters related to uh, equally necessary would be an intense sensitization among teachers on matters related to their possible prejudices and for ensuring uh, emotional and, and holding and backstopping, particularly for those children who are from from vulnerable home backgrounds. 
I understand that the Minister of Education of Delhi addresses parents and teachers periodically for promoting certain items on the government's educational agenda. It is certain it is uh, perhaps necessary for him to use those effective communication channels as well as the instrument of mentor teachers to attempt to create awareness and sensitivity among the school community. Like all state governments, the government of Delhi is also going through a major financial cr crunch. It is quite likely that this may spill over to school education as well. The civil society needs to keep their advocacy on with full intensity to ensure that further impoverishment of public school education does not happen, particularly at a time when we need to strengthen the public education system all the more. Uh, thank you. That's all I wanted to say as my initial remark, and uh, I hope there will be a, uh, an interaction based on this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Menon, for your thank you, thoughtful Shikhi. speech. Yeah. Srijita, can you ask the, some observation from the participants? Uh, yes, uh, a couple of participants have uh, sent their queries uh, in the chat box. So I am, okay. uh, Professor Menon, I'm sharing, uh, if you could take a look at the chat box, otherwise I'm sharing it to you on your WhatsApp. Uh, there the are chat uh, box, yeah. Yes, I can see the chat boxes. Uh, yes, uh, okay. uh, so if you could address the okay. questions uh, and some reflections. Um, yeah, the only thing is this, that, you know, the, the, uh, these are, uh, some of them are reflections which are, which need to be highlighted. Um, um, several of them are introductions, actually. Um, can I, can I come in, Professor Menon? I'm Sitan here. Uh, I'm Sitan here. Can I come in, please? Um, uh, Sir, it yeah. would be better if uh, uh, Shitanshuji. It would be better if you can just uh, write your questions in the uh, in the chat box. Okay, okay, okay. I'll I'll do that. I'll do yes. that. Yes. Thank, thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm uh, 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 Shrijita, if, if you can kindly help me with the uh, uh, highlighting, focusing on some of these which are real issues and questions. Yes, um, I have sent you a couple of questions on your uh, privately in the chat box to you. Into the chat box to me. Okay, two messages I can see. Is that it? Privately. How do I, uh, how do I access that? I don't know. <laughs> okay, uh, so I'll just uh, so uh, so there's one uh, reflection from Punita who is from Delhi University. Uh, her reflection oh, yeah. is uh, interpersonal relations mm. between the teachers and learners have been missed somewhere in these online classes and the emotional yes. well-being needs to be taken care of. Yes, I mean, this is what I uh, briefly mentioned as social distancing between teachers and students. In, um, in government schools and public school system, it has been a, an issue and particularly because of class differences. and. Um, I think uh, the extent to which we, uh, the class really comes, uh, we have observed in our many research uh, uh, studies as well, that class really comes in the way of uh, uh, engagement between uh, teachers and students. And, uh, but this is, this particularly is a time when I think one needs to really um, transcend some of those kinds of issues. Uh, and um, reach out to the students. And we, I'm, I'm actually also afraid of how the prejudices related to uh, uh, the, the communal prejudices I mentioned as a social pandemic, which is also likely to uh, surface its uh, or raise its ugly head in the way in which the school dynamics will, uh, uh, will pan out. So the, uh, these are things to be anticipated. And in my opinion, that's where I think the, the school system, the government uh, needs to come in the come in very strongly and clearly and give a message that what is acceptable behavior and what has to be in by way of, uh, uh, you know, sensitive uh, hand-holding, um, emotional hand-holding and backstopping that needs to be done, ensuring that there is 
children in the mark on margins are continued need to participate effectively in, in in school and so on so i think they uh, uh, are not um, you know business as usual thing these are extraordinary days and it's, impo- it's important for us to solve these kinds of uh, uh, questions was responded to Uh, so uh, there is uh, there so is yes uh, sir yes yeah, so there is a question from uh, mr ss jena uh, he says hello. Uh, hello 